Apple Maps versus Google Maps, and more coming up on today's episode of the Lace and Tech News. Hey Gadgeteer, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3 in show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is the Lace and Tech News. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button right now so that you don't miss out on the latest episode. We do this every weekday around these parts and we'd hate for you to miss out. Also, if you happen to enjoy anything that you hear on the show today, be sure to share this episode with a friend. It's the only way this show gets out and the word is spread. Now, I do have an update. The uh, podcast awards ceremony was yesterday, and uh, we were nominated for the Best in Technology category at the 2019 Podcast Awards, the 14th annual um event that's been going on since that time and we were up at let me just say we were up against some pretty tough competition we were nominated however we did not win that being said we can still say that we were nominated for an award and there is an option to be able to uh get our hands on a nominee trophy that close from what i heard the um Voting this year was super tight across the board. It was really anybody's game. So thank you all to who, you who nominated the show, who voted for the show. I really appreciate the uh, the work that you guys went through uh, to nominate the show and and uh, just nominate for for an award. I, I I never thought in you know a million years that I'd be nominated. I thought, man, I don't have any chance of. of even hitting the nominee slate um, the podcast awards has been going on for 14 years i've been aware of every single year that it's happened i've watched every single one that's happened i know a fair amount of the shows I, i've been around the podcasting world since 2006 uh but this show is only 14 months old and uh to have been nominated and and make the nominee slate is quite an impressive feat at that so next year hopefully maybe we'll come home with something but regardless i'm super excited to uh welcome all new listeners who joined in because of that uh, i'm super glad that you're here we cover the latest tech gadget and gaming news kind of do a brief recap now typically uh we cover seven ish articles an episode uh we do this five days a week monday to friday Saturday and Sunday are off, um, but right now I kind of have a, a a shortened schedule, as it were, because I have other projects going on in the background, so we only have kind of like the cream of the crop, the top three, one from tech, one from gadget, and one from gaming news, and sometimes if there's nothing going on in one of the three, I'll usually throw another story in. Um, speaking of which, we're actually looking at four articles today, so woohoo! We'll be looking at, for our feature story, this Apple Maps update might finally be what pulls people away from Google Maps. We'll be getting into that. We'll also be taking a look at, well, some NES emulators and alternative iOS apps. Possibility. Uh, you don't have to worry about jailbreaking if that has been your main beef with all of it. Although, keep in mind, you do jailbreak something. You may or may op not open yourself up to additional problems that uh, now won't be covered in case you break something. So, uh, jailbreak responsibly, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a PNA say announcement. No, just in case you're wondering. Uh, we'll also be taking a look at the Surface Pro 7 and Laptop 3 press release photos get leaked ahead of Microsoft's press conference. Although, was it deliberate or accidental? I'll leave that up to you. And finally, we'll be taking a look at Facebook's Oculus launches Horizon, a virtual reality-based social networking platform. Uh, but before we can, let's take a look back on today in tech history. All right, today is September 30th, 2019. On this day, in 1980, Digital, Intel, and Xerox release version 1.0 of the Ethernet specification known as the Blue Book. Since that time, Ethernet has evolved into the de facto networking standard for local area networks, known as LAN, in businesses and in the home, uh, outside of Wi-Fi. Um, Ethernet really hasn't expanded much since then, but I do remember covering a couple articles to try and get uh, it to 
speed up and go faster because we're kind of limited by the uh, speed that can be transferred between the power the data cords anyways fiber did anybody say fiber hmm we'll be getting into that maybe possibly hopefully in a future news segment also on this day in history in 1941 Modulli writes Anastoff suggesting some cooperative work during the trial to decide who would receive credit for designing the first electronic computer john anastov's lawyer mr halliday finally persuaded john modulli to confirm several key points one such point was that on september 30th 1941 modulli had written to dr anastov co-designer of the anastov Berry computer suggesting a cooperative effort modulli was considering the development of a computer and had asked anastov if he had any objection to the use of his concepts the judge would eventually rule in favor of Dr. Anasov because, well, come on, he came up with the idea and then somebody else tried to rip it away from him. Um, it's, okay, the only thing I'm going to say on this whole entire, it, it seemed like this weird 50-year span uh, around this time, um, roughly, that, I don't know, some odd reason copyrights and patents were just big hullabaloo. And everybody and anybody wanted a patent or copyright stuff, and it got super annoying and it, it caused big headaches for any advancements in the tech world, which is completely frustrating and understandable. So, I mean, you're trying to create technology for the better of humanity. Um, why in the world are you fighting over who gets credit for what? For crying out loud, just make the dang thing. If it works properly, we'll know who did it, right? Anyways. With that being said, let's head on over to today's feature story. All right, now before we get into today's episode, I uh, just want to let you know, if you're interested in any of the articles that we happen to cover on today's show, head on over to technewsgadget.net. This one we pulled from CNET, and it looks like this Apple Maps update might be what finally pulls people away from Google Maps. Now, it had a map refresh. Now, for those of you interested, there are a couple affected areas that if you're living in the area might be beneficial. But then there's also some other features that might be helpful too. I mean, initially I looked at the story and I was like, I'm not really that interested if they just updated a couple areas. I could care less. But there are a couple features that are worth pointing out that might just be what pulls people away from Google Maps. Apple is expanding the features in its Maps app and rolling out a revamped map for New York and other northeastern areas following the launch of iOS 13. The updated map, which people will start seeing today, includes broader road network coverage, better pedestrian data, more accurate addresses, and more detailed land cover. Users will also see a more realistic view of buildings, parks, marinas, and beaches. Apple unveiled its new look for maps in June, just in case you're wondering, at its annual WDC in San Jose, California. For the past several years, the company has been rebuilding its mapping technology from the ground up, and it looks uh, to lure people away from other maps, like Google Maps and Waze. The more detailed maps were already available in parts of California as of Monday. These new maps will cover New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Maryland, Delaware, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Washington, D.C., and parts of Virginia and West Virginia. Apple plans to have revamped maps out to the rest of the U.S., by the end of the year and internationally by 2020. Now I want to point out in addition to a more detailed map view some other new map features include first look around the feature which, which lets you pan around in 360 degrees think Google Street View but made by Apple is now available in all five boroughs of New York City. There's also Siri natural language guidance the voice assistant now provides natural sounding directions in NYC. Uh, for example, Siri will, will say, turn left right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish it would. Turn left at the next traffic light instead of turn in 1,000 feet, to which I usually respond, which way, dummy? And then Siri gets mad and yells at me. <sighs> Stupid Siri. If only you would say the direction in which I'm to turn. Maybe an angle would be helpful if it's a you know, 90 degree or 45 degree angle road coming up. Collections is another feature available with iOS 13. Collections lets you build shareable lists of your favorite places or places that you want to visit in a city. There's also real-time transit, also part of iOS 13. This feature provides real-time information like live departure times, outages, and cancellations. Maps also now includes more detailed transit schedules so you can browse stops and connections in advance. There's also 
well, one that's been tossed around and familiar with for some time is share ETA. This lets you share your estimated time of arrival with others. Maps can update those who receive the original message if a significant delay occurs, which is nice. The new map can also notify them when you're arriving. And finally, indoor maps for airports and malls. Available starting today, you can get a detailed look inside malls around the country and airports around the world. Kind of make it easier to figure out which store or which, um, I don't know, terminal you're supposed to be at. Because some airports are super frustrating and some malls are way too big. You get confused and lost in there. And I think it's at this point that I kind of realized I'm partially losing my voice. Um, I've been suffering from a sore throat lately, so... You just have to excuse me for a minute as I wet my whistle. So yeah, what do you guys think? Is this enough to pull you away from Google Maps or Waze or whatever you use? Or you've been happy with Apple Maps so far if you're watching via YouTube? Let me know down in the comments. If you're on Twitter, we are at Tech News Gadget. But yeah, it's uh, finally an update. Decent, good update. Uh, a couple of really good, interesting features. I, I'm always interested in seeing what else can they think of when it comes to maps? What new features can they introduce? Definitely helpful uh, in terms of was there an accident that happened here? Is there something we need to be aware of? Is there an object in the road? That's what Waze has done a couple of times, and that's been helpful. Um, but yeah, information like that is uh, definitely... Well, we don't have to use paper maps anymore. Now we just look at our phones, right? It's 2019. Time to get with the times. All right, moving right along. Well, we got an article here. Uh, in case you're interested in installing NES emulators and alternative iOS apps with Alt Store. Interesting. Now, uh, if you want to actually see my reaction and how it actually looks, uh, head on over to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget and you can uh, watch the show there. As someone who uses Android as their primary mobile OS, not me, the author, uh, they tend to focus on alternative apps and services to Google products. Doesn't mean that they don't also enjoy the third-party replacements for Apple's apps on iOS and iPad. Unfortunately, Apple's walled garden approach to its products means there are fewer third-party or open-source app alternatives available on iOS than on Android, and most require you to jailbreak your iPhone, which is a tedious warranty-busting project. However, a newly released open-source app store project from software developer Riley Tetsut aptly named Alt Store can be downloaded and installed on your iOS devices with a clever workaround. Alt Store is pretty new and only carries a uh, included small handful of software created by them at launch, but this includes the Delta emulator app that lets you play NES games on the iPhone, potentially even SNES, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance in the future. More apps will hopefully be added to Alt Store in the future, but it's a pretty big deal. Emulation software is banned from the official App Store and used to be nigh impossible to install on iPhones without jailbreaking the device. Alt Store is able to exist by exploiting a few iOS loopholes, like the ability to download software to your phone via a Mac Windows application. It's a smart but precarious solution, and Apple could easily shut the whole thing down at some point because of that looming potential. It's probably smart to install Alt Store immediately even if you're remotely interested in what it's offering. Developers can check out the Alt Store GitHub page if you're curious and want to learn more about the project. And then the article goes on to explain uh, how to actually install it and, and some apps on it. So yeah, if you guys are interested, well, there is a link, like I said, in the show notes for today. Moving on to our next article. Well, Microsoft had a press conference coming up. Somehow, the Surface Pro 7 and Laptop 3 press photos got leaked uh, before the press conference happened. Uh, you see, it was they were set to take the stage in a couple of days from now to unveil the new Surface hardware and Windows software. The addition to the expected Surface Pro 7 and Surface 3 uh, Laptop 3 product refreshes. Microsoft should also be unveiling Surface models featuring ARM and AMD chips, according to recent leaks. Moreover, there's a chance Microsoft will showcase its first dual-screen foldable laptop alongside a light version of Windows 10 built to run on ARM-based devices. While you wait, you can check out the following Surface marketing images that leaked ahead of the press conference, and we got those images right here. 
A leaker going by Walking Cat posted four Surface Pro 7 and Surface Laptop 3 images on Twitter that will likely be used on Microsoft Surface site to highlight the various features of the upcoming devices. Um, and I guess there's a link. Whoa, let's go take a look. Anything but ordinary. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Um, each photo features the tagline, anything but ordinary, and shows the device in everyday scenarios. Now, most of the images lack descriptions, but one does confirm that a Surface Pro 7 model will feature 4G LTE connectivity. So, hmm. One eagle-eyed Twitter user replied to the thread above, explaining what's new with the upcoming Surface laptop, stating, Clearly on the first and second device shows no air vent around. The second is LTE, and the top band is half height that previous versions. And the third is clearly a Surface laptop, and the camera is plugged into a USB port where the MDP was. Now, the Surface Laptop 3 is expected to come in both 13-inch and 15-inch variants. All models will likely run on Intel's latest generation of processors, in addition to the ARM and AMD variants. A leak a few days ago listed the purported Surface Pro 7 configurations, suggesting Microsoft might reduce the entry price of its flagship 2-in-1. So, little else is known about the new Surface models, but Microsoft will unveil the 2019 Surface Pro and Surface Laptop products on October 2nd during a live stream event that, uh, well, if you're in Tune 4, you could probably watch on Twitch, uh, YouTube, Facebook, maybe, I don't know. Browse around, and I'm sure you'll find a link. All right, moving on to some gaming news. Well, I know how much you guys love uh, VR stuff, and, uh, well, Facebook does too. Facebook's Oculus launches Horizon, a virtual reality-based social networking platform. So, for some odd reason, this reminds me of the Mii, you know, from the Nintendo. <laughs> uh, but, it, okay. Well, Facebook is trying to broaden its virtual horizons nonetheless. The company's virtual reality unit, Oculus, on Wednesday announced Facebook Horizon, described as an ever-expanding VR world, where people can interact with others as digital avatars. And this was last Wednesday, in case you guys were um, wondering. Uh, it just took a little while to hit my radar, and I know people were interested in some VR stuff. So uh, you can interact with others as digital avatars. Users will be able to add features and elements to the world, which Facebook said will be constantly growing with extraordinary creations made by Horizon citizens. I can't help but wonder if they're trying to compete with Minecraft or Roblox some extent here. Now, Mark Zuckerberg unveiled the program on stage at Oculus's annual developer conference in San Jose, California. The product comes across like a mixture of a number of past and current offerings for building virtual world, including Second Life, the program invented by Linden Labs in 2003 that gained more traction in pop culture than it did with actual users. It actually made it all the way to the point of being mentioned on The Office. Uh, it also sounds like the future described in a popular book-turned-movie Ready Player One in the book, people spend most of their time living in virtual reality and spend large sums of real-world money improving their avatars with things like weapons and clothes. Although for me, at one point or another, I kind of wonder to myself, do they spend any... Like, how much are they getting paid in real life? Like a salary-wise? Because it seems like all they do is sit around in their virtual reality headset the whole entire time. <sighs> I guess if that's what you spend your money on, I'm comparing Ready Player One. Here we go. Um, the company did explain exactly how Horizon will work. Facebook did say the product will launch as a closed beta test in 2020 and shared some additional e details in a blog post uh, later Wednesday afternoon. Users will be able to interact with one another in a virtual town square and then jump to different sections of the world using magic-like portals called, get this guys, Soup's Original Telepods. <laughs> oh, and I got a video that goes along with it. Thank goodness. I always wanted to wonder what my me looked like dancing around in half body and no leg. Uh, sorry. It's just... Uh, there are aspects that I like about it and some other aspects where I'm like, can we please maybe have something a little bit better? But I understand. I understand. VR is early in development. So give it some time. The technology will pick up with it. 
Facebook has long pitched virtual reality as a technology that aligns to its mission to connect everyone in the world, but VR has never gone mainstream in the way Facebook once had hoped. Mainly because, guys, stop jumping the shark, you're just going to break the whole thing. And the most popular VR experience have been more reclusive. Gaming, for example, is still the most common use case for VR, and putting on a headset may help you connect with others online, but it doesn't really work well when you're in physical presence of other people. Well, I wonder. So, um, Horizon is Facebook's latest effort to change that, and a chance to bring a more social element to virtual reality. So, there you go. Uh, that's uh, Facebook's Horizon for you. So, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. And uh, that's it for today's episode of the Latest in Tech News. Thanks for tuning in. New episodes every weekday. The Latest in Tech News can be found on every major platform, including Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, two things for you guys. Number one, make sure that you're subscribed. If you're not, double check. And number two, share this episode with a friend. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick. Remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keeping awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.